everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a example on how to design a steel column. So in this example, it's gonna be a column with two secondary beams and one primary beam. To keep things simple, the two secondary beams apply no load and are there purely for restraint. The primary beam is gonna be the one with a huge shear force on it. And it's quite typical for something like a really big transfer beam to have such a large shear force. And in this example, the shear force is going to be 2,261 kilonewtons. I'm just going to draw a quick 3D diagram just to kind of highlight what I mean in the text. What I've completely forgot to show is the height of the column and the column height is going to be 5.6 meters. Another thing which I forgot to mention is the fixities at the top and the bottom of the column. I've shown that the bottom is pinned, but actually um, in the calculations, it's actually going to be fixed. So the bottom is fixed in both axes and the top is going to be pinned in the major and fixed in the minor. So now we're just going to try a section. So I'm just going to try a 254 by 107 UC column section. And I'm just going to be listing out the section properties, which I'll be using these values for the calculations further on. You can find these section properties in the SCI blue book, or if you've got the red pocket book, you can also find them there. So now we need to work out what the section classification is for both the flange and the web. You want to be aiming for class one or class two and avoiding classes three and four to make things simpler. Class three and four is gonna be beyond the scope of this video and I might do a video on it another time. So make sure you like and subscribe to get notified for when I actually do post that video. So I'm first gonna check the classifications for the flanges and this equation you can find um, in the Eurocodes. So all you do is plug the numbers from the section properties and you just need to check that C over T is going to be less than 9 epsilon. So now we're moving on to checking the classification for the web and again it's pretty much the exact same thing as checking it for the flange. It's a separate equation which you can be found in the Eurocodes and again just plug the numbers in and check that it's going to be less than 33 epsilon and then you'll be okay. So now we're going to be moving on to the main check, which is checking the buckling resistance. So NBRD is the buckling resistance, and you can see in the equation there are some factors which we need to work out. The X symbol I think is called Psi, um, and that is the buckling reduction factor. A is the area, FY is the steel yield stress, and Gamma is the material safety factor. So to work out psi, we need to work out the non-dimensional slenderness factor denoted by lambda. So to calculate lambda, we need the buckling length, which is LCR. We also need the radius of gyration, which is I, and we also need lambda one. And lambda one is denoted by pi times the square root of the Young's modulus over the yield stress of steel. And this equation can be simplified down to 93.9 times epsilon. But epsilon is calculated earlier on in the example, which comes to 0.92. Multiply this all together and you get a lambda 1 of 86.4. So now we need to check the buckling about both axes, so about the major yy and about the minor zz. An easy way to do this is just to create a simple little table. So the first row is going to be column length of 5.6 meters. Next we have the effective length factor of the column and you can find this in the red book. This factor changes depending on the fixity conditions you have at the top and the bottom of the column. Then we have the buckling length, which is just simply timesing the column length by the effective length factor. Next we have the radius of gyration. Next we need to work out the non-dimensional slenderness, which is lambda. Now we need to decide which buckling curve we need to select, and in this case in the major axis it's B, and in the minor axis it's C. Using the buckling curve, we can work out that psi is 0.88 for the major and 0.75 in the minor. The buckling curve is really easy to use. All you've got to do is find the lambda value, draw a line up and across, and then you've got your psi value. So now that we've calculated all the appropriate factors to work out the buckling resistance, we can now do this for both major and minor. The buckling resistance in the major axis is going to be 3,291, and in the minor axis, it's going to be 2,780 kilonewtons. Because the minor axis resistance was lower, that means that the minor axis is the most critical. So we need to check that the applied force of 2261 from the beam is going to be less than the resistance, in which case it is. So even though the beam is a simple connection using a thin plate, because of where the force acts, 
which is going to be away from the flange slightly, we need to check for our eccentric moment caused by the shear force. Because we don't know what the connection is going to be yet, it's safe to assume that the eccentric length is going to be around 100mm. So I know I've drawn a thin plate with only 3 bolts and it's extremely unlikely that 3 bolts is going to be able to resist such a large um, shear force of 2000 odd kilonewtons, but just bear with me for this example. So basically we need to check the member for a combined actual and bending resistance check. So to keep this simple, we're going to be assuming that this is going to be a simple construction and this is where you can use the kind of simplified equation. So the first part is going to be the actual or buckling check, which is what we just did. And then the next part is going to be checking the major axis and then the other part is going to be checking the minor axis. Because in this example, we're assuming that the secondary beams are providing no load. So there is no minor axis eccentric moment. And we just need to calculate the eccentric major axis moment and that's going to be using the shear force of 2261 times by the eccentric length of 0.1 meters. And this gives us an eccentric moment of 226.1 kilonewton meters. From the blue book we can find the bending moment resistance for this section size. In this case with a buckling length of 4 meters, the bending moment resistance is going to be 442 kilonewton meters. So substitute all the values into the above equation and then you get a value of 1.32 which is unfortunately greater than 1 which means that the section fails. So rather than repeating the same steps again, I'll show you a slightly quicker method which is using the blue book tables. So we're going to jump the size up to 305 by 118 UC instead. First we'll check the compression resistance with a buckling length of 4 meters and we get an actual resistance of 3860 kilonewtons. We need to work out N, which is the applied actual force over the resistance, so 2261 over 3860, which gives us 0.59. Next we check the cross section for the moments. Now that we've worked out N, we just go down the column and then we find out the bending moment resistance of 232, which is greater than the applied of 226, therefore it's okay. So we can use this new session size of 305 by 118 UC. Hopefully you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers!